everyone. Welcome to Hawkeye Traders. My name is Randy Lindsay, host of today's live interactive session. I'm here to educate and inform you on how to use Hawkeye on the live edge of the market. If you do have any questions or comments over here on the right hand side of your go-to webinar control panel is a questions pane. Please enter your question or comment there. I'll be more than glad to get to them in the order that they are received. I will be going over the Hawkeye method today and I'll be introducing to you all the Hawkeye tools on the Ninja Trader platform. So if you have any questions or comments about Ninja Trader or the Hawkeye tools on Ninja, please let me know. I'll make sure you understand that we are here for educational purposes only, that we are not registered trading advisors, so we cannot give you trading advice. But we are here to inform you and to uh, teach you how to use Hawkeye today specifically on ninja trader on the live edge of the market make sure you understand and know that trading forex futures equities cryptocurrencies and options have a large potential for reward but they also have a large potential for risk you must be aware of the risks and be willing to accept them in order to invest or trade in these markets please do not trade with money that you cannot afford to lose remember that past performance is never indicative of future results uh, it might be sometimes, but a lot of times it's not. So anything that we show you uh, is not a guarantee that the future events will occur the exact same way. Um, please make sure you get advice from a competent financial advisor before you invest money in any of these markets. Never, ever, ever trade in a live account until you've first proven that you can consistently and profitably trade in a simulated account. It's all about the mind. It's all about pre preparing the mind and getting ready for the mind games that happen when you do start putting real money on. Fear and greed drive these markets, and we want to make sure that we keep ahead of the game. We've developed a suite of tools to help us to be consistent in the markets, to try to not play into the game of fear and greed, try to be consistent on entries and exits in a mechanical method, but at the same time the flexibility to still be responsive to what the market is trying to tell us. We want to trade what volume shows us. Volume is really the only leading indicator in the market, so we want to be able to understand what we see from the markets through volume. And all of our tools are built upon volume, and we see things through the eye and the lens of volume, so that helps us to, to be concise. So when we take entries, they are definitive entries. They are definitive exits that are based upon rules which are governed by price action and volume. And that's the whole name of the game. So the Hawkeye method, which I'll be talking about today, is a methodology. It's not a strategy, because there are different strategies involved, but it's a method where you apply rules to a market, whatever time frame, whatever market that you are trading, uh, in such a way that you can enter and exit without fear, knowing that over time you can consistently be successful. That's the whole idea of the methodology. So I'm showing a futures market right here. This is the NASDAQ NQ on the 0918, which is the September contract. It just rolled over last week. So we're trading the front month contract is now September and we are trading on that. What I have displayed on my screen here is a three minute. This is a three minute chart. This chart right down here is a six minute chart. This chart right over here is a 12 minute chart. And bottom right hand corner is a 60 minute chart. The 60 minute chart helps me to see what the overall longer term trend is. I like to trade in the direction of the overall trend. So the trend is your friend. So whenever I take a downward trend in an up market, I know it's simply a correction and I'm looking for very quick profits. If I'm trading in the direction of the prevailing trend, then I will allow my profits to roll and uh, I will take much longer trends. So that's the idea of uh, what we're looking at for multiple charts. Multiple time frames also keep us safe in that we understand uh, the relationship between these harmonic time frames. I select these time frames based upon their harmonics. A three minute will be my primary fastest trading chart. Uh, with it, I double the time frame. I can also triple it. 
the important part is that it be integer multiples of the time frame I use. So a three minute times two will be a six minute chart. I could also do a three minute times three and use a nine minute chart. It's also a good time frame. And you can also take the same multiple over into the, your third chart. In this case, I simply doubled. Three times two is six. Six times two is 12. Also, 12 is three times four. So I can you can see that it is a multiple of all three charts. So that's the idea about making integer multiples of all the time frames so that they are harmonic with each other. And then the last one is a 60 minute. You can see it is a harmonic of three as well, 20 times, and 12 and eight, six are also harmonics uh, of that as well. So the idea behind this is to have a longer, shorter time frame perspective so that you're not going to be whipped around. A lot of times the shorter time frame will go in and out of trends very quickly, whereas the longer terms will stick with the trade. You don't want to have to be suffer the pullback of a longer term stop. So we trade the shorter term time frames so that we can use shorter or tighter stops Re with relationship to the longer time frame it helps us to get in at the right time when we trade we are trading probabilities and risk okay that's what the whole game is about we're not here to make money although that is the secondary goal or that's actually what occurs when you do manage it but when you are trading probabilities and managing risk properly the money will come. You focus on the probabilities of the trade and the risk in the trade. You always are managing your risk, making sure that you are minimizing risk at any possible turn and making sure that you're managing that trade well. If you do that, then the money is just going to be secondary to that. Most successful disciplined traders understand that and actually practice that. They practice discipline and methodology and a methodology that manages risk. Proper position sizing and risk management is the key to success. And you can be part of that if you follow that using the Hawkeye methodology, it's, which is based on that. It's most, mostly based upon uh, Wyckoff rules of uh, volume and price. And uh, we've applied those principles in a methodology that can be structured into a strategy. So if you are into mechanical, pure mechanical trading, where you write strategies and have them run automated, um, Hawkeye methods are fully compatible and can be run as automated strategies as well. But I will just go through that real quick. If you become a Hawkeye member, then you get access to all of our training videos and the uh, user's guides in the membership area. You also uh, get access to our three-step entry exit method, which I'll go over with you today. The three-step method is a simple method that helps you to see whatever time frame, whatever market that you trade. There's a way to enter the market, a way to take profits, and a way to exit the market that is consistent and proven. We look for three time frame to confirm entries and we follow those. Taking this three minute chart as an example on the NASDAQ right here, you can see that right uh, before the market opened, there was a signal that the roadkill gave us on the six minute chart that said that the volume aligned with the current volume on the chart. We can also see on the second time frame that we got a nice signal where the volume of the third time frame aligned with the volume on our three minute chart. That's what those small little dots are. That shows the alignment of longer term with the shorter term. So if I wanted to blow this chart up and just look at it only, then I can see all three time frames at the same time. I can see my three minute trend shown by the little dots on the screen. Green is an uptrend, red is a downtrend and white is neutral or congestion see right there the heat map simply takes all three of the trend speeds if you were to look at the trend itself and format that then you can see that the trend speed on the indicator itself can be set to normal conservative or aggressive i like to keep mine conservative uh, because it, what it does is it keeps the price and volume farthest away from the stop area. 
If you pull this into aggressive, which is the fastest, then what it will do is it'll move these stops much closer to price and it'll cause the um, uh, oscillations to be a lot tighter. So while it is uh, um, get you into trades a little bit quicker, it also will get you out of trades a lot quicker as well, possibly before they have had time to fully develop. Uh, this this is the Hawkeye level on the screen. I'll go ahead and uh, click to turn it off and then lock it. Uh, but you use that to help you to manage the trade once it's been placed. So the next tool is Hawkeye volume. Volume just shows the uh, selling volume, buying volume, or neutral volume. Selling volume is indicated by red price bar. Uh, buying volume uh, is green and neutral is white, just like the trend what we're looking at is volume spread analysis so we're looking at the distribution of volume over every single one of these price bars All right so if i were to pull out this chart and expand it just a little bit then you can see a price bar that has an open high low and close has a distribution of volume around that so i like a volume profile uh, we don't show you the volume profile, but what we do is we analyze that volume profile. We break it down, and then we look at the profile relative to the profile of the previous bar, the profile of the previous five price bars, and then we lump that into five price bar groups. And then we do a comparison of the open and close of those ranges, the distribution of volume, and the average price or average true range relative to that. From that, we make a, an analysis of the open and close with the volume distribution to say, is this selling volume or is this buying volume? And then we paint the bar based on that. So we do all the hard work for you in the background, but we show you the results of that, which is a highly accurate measure for the presence of either aggressive buying or aggressive selling on this particular market. Anytime you see a white bar, though, that is a neutral bar that says there's a essentially an equal distribution of buyers and sellers on that price bar so we are very neutral on those things because there's a lot of volume which means there's probably a lot of buyers there's also a lot of sellers and where they come on the price bar will give you the relative measure of where it is on the bar but it it's still a very good indication of what price is going to be doing based upon that volume okay pull that back to where we were All right, so, and that's uh, trend, volume, and heat map. That is the uh, step number one. That's the core tools that we use to help us to decide whether we want to have an entry. You look for green trend, green heat map, and green volume in order to take a long trade. You look for red trend, red heat map, and red volume in order to take a short trend. That's the first step because you're only using one time frame. The second step is to look for confirming second time frame trend or volume. So you're looking for second time frame volume to agree with the first time frame volume, which means that if you're going long, you want the second time frame volume to be green. That's what the roadkill does. The roadkill shows you the uh, first and second time frame volume right here that back on put it back on again oh, that's really weird how it does that um, you're looking for that second time frame volume and to be equal to the first time frame volume so it's a simple alignment what the roadkill does is when that alignment occurs it'll put small little dots on your screen right here which are color coded to tell you direction cyan will tell you there's a volume uh, roadkill occurring a gray tells you there's an aggressive volume roadkill occurring Magenta tells you that there's a down volume roadkill occurring. A dark red tells you that there's a, a trend roadkill to the downside. And a dark green dot tells you there's a trend roadkill to the upside. So it shows you agreement of both trend and volume on your longer time frame with your shorter time frame. This particular roadkill indicator shows me my six minute time frame chart. I have it formatted so that I am looking at the six minute 
slow bar interval relative to my faster time span. And I also have my trend speeds set up so that they are matched. Now, if I wanted to have a little bit faster entries, then one thing you can do is you can change your slow trend speed to aggressive while keeping your fast trend speed conservative. And that will trigger or give you a signal of agreement a little bit faster on your six minute relative to your three minute over time. And so that's a that's one way to try to get into trades a little bit quicker or a little bit sooner if you think you're, you're getting a little bit late to the party. I personally like to keep mine both to conservative because I like to stay with the longer term trend for as long as possible. The next indicator here is the uh, secondary heat map. I have a heat map here, which is three minute, but this is a heat map HT indicator. So the heat map HT is a higher time frame heat map. And so it gives me uh, the ability to change the time frame so that I can look at my longer time frame charts. Of course, I can set it to be any number I want, but in this particular case, I want it to be the heat map from the second time frame chart. In this case, the six minute. So I'm going to take this heat map down here on this chart, but I'm going to display it up here on this chart. So that's what this is right here. So this is a six minute time frame chart that's displayed on my three minute, and I can compare that with my three minute heat map. A heat map is a good measure of the strength of a trend or its momentum. So it gets rolling and then it stays rolling or it starts to turn and you start to see strength or weakness in that trend. So a, a bright green or bright red shows a strong trend. A dark green or dark red shows weakening or a potential change in direction of that trend. So for for our entries, we're looking for weakness. So for any long trade, we're looking for dark red, dark green, or bright green. For any short trade, we're looking for any dark green, dark red, or dark uh, bright red for short. Okay. And then the third time frame. So the first time frame gives us our first step. Second time frame gives us our second step. We're looking for volume and heat map agreement and potential heat map weakness. And then third step is the third time frame. We need to see third time frame volume agreeing with our first time frame volume. If we have all three of those steps in agreement, then we have all the conditions met for us to have entry into the market. Now there are other tools that we can use to help us to make and discern those entries. Those are the Hawkeye, Fat Boy, and the Kiss. The, the Fat Boy is a nice tool that helps us to see relative strength or weakness of the markets and correlation. So if we if we know the markets are correlated, then we know that they're all trending together. Like right now, the green line is NASDAQ. We can see that the green line is trending up with strength. Is it extremely strong, but it's also overbought. Relative to the other markets, you can see the mid caps are weak. You can see that gold is trending weak, that the uh, the Dow Jones is, is trending really strong, and it's starting to become overbought. The uh, S&P, it's just kind of meandering around, but it's strong, but it's meandering around. Right now, NASDAQ is the strongest relative to all the other, and the white is uh, crude oil. There's a crude oil report coming out today uh, in about one hour. A little bit less than one hour at 10:30. Also, uh, today is FOMC day. Fed funds rates are going to be announced today at two o'clock Eastern time. Uh, this is a good day just to sit on your hands. A lot of people do not like to trade on Fed funds day when the rates are announced, simply because the markets are usually just sitting back waiting to see. A lot of times, the the rates are already priced into the market. Um, they're looking for a quarter percent raise in the interest rates today. It's going to go from 1.75% to 2%. That's what they're expecting, and the market's expecting that. So if if it does not go up, that will be a, a big surprise. If it does go up, it might already be pasted in. So there might be a small correction or nothing. Uh, so if there, there is, is a bigger than a quarter percent raise, then that's going to be a, a pretty big surprise 
uh, probably a negative impact on the market's prices. So um, those are some things that you need to always be aware of when you're trading in the markets. So looking at these charts on this particular one, you can see the initial trend volume and heat map occurred right here. So if I were to pull this up and see this alignment right here, trend volume and heat map all aligned right here. Second time frame, I got a roadkill blue dot that showed volume alignment. But if you look at the heat map right here, see the heat map is still bright red. So I would have had to have taken on a lot of risk if this was my initial entry point. Now, it looks like a good entry. Um, if you were to look at this trade at this point right here, you can see as price started to pull up, you got a really strong volume price agreement. You're breaking out of a consolidation range where the trend was coming down, it consolidated, and then it broke high. So six ways the market moves, you can see, ah, this is the initial start of a new trend. It's a great break. All of that is true. So there's nothing stopping you from taking this as a trade entry. You could even see uh, a, a nice little flag pattern that this is a break from that. But like most things, uh, once price breaks a range, the probability is that it will always come back and test that. So prior resistance becomes current support. So this resistance area, which was defined by price action, was broken, had to be retested. So that whole range became a test. Here it can continue back out. Markets opened at 9.30, yet another retest, but then the, the direction of that break then continued. So at this point here, you can see that there was another trend given, but you never want to enter just before a big market open. Um, these, this is the time that if I'm trading pre-market, I usually get out of a trade. I don't like to hold on to a trades at the open of the market. Some people do. Some people like to take the, the initial directional change of a market as a great entry point. If the market's starting to trend up and the markets pull back, that's a great buy point for a acceleration long. If the markets are opening, rallying up into the market and it pushes up initially strong, that's a great sign that the market probably will be reversing down. So that's, you know, there are strategies and there are tactics and there are ways to, to get at these markets. Personally, I'm a more conservative trader. And so I usually wait for the first 15 minutes of a market to develop. And then I look at the resulting trend uh, that comes from that 15 minute time frame. Because it usually takes about that long for the markets to absorb the overnight volume to get trading interested, to allow all the gaps to fill and so forth. Once that's done, normal trend trading will usually resume. And so I like to trade the probabilities that the trend resulting after a 15 minute opening period will be the uh, trend uh, of the day. Also, I like to, um, to look at the resistance and support values of the first 15 minutes of the day, because those typically give us some, some really good indications that support and resistance levels are going to be held throughout the day. And I've got uh, other tools that show me that, which is a good indication that support and resistance is good for multiple days um, within that 15 minute period. So uh, looking at this then from our three step method, we can see that the uh, pre-market entry um, was not good either because we can see the heat map still had not come in yet. But then once the uh, market opened, um, you can see that the uh, everything came into alignment at this point with the exception of fast volume. Notice that fast volume became white, white, and we did not get any signal until right here. Right here is the very first time that you can see trend, volume, heat map, second time frame volume, second time frame heat map, and third time frame volume became a green. Okay, so this then becomes the very first point that you should or would want to be start starting to look at taking an entry into this market. It's trending in the direction of the longer term trend. You can see that there is a nice trend of strength on your fat boy. And this uh, kiss right here hasn't updated yet. So let me see if I can't update that chart. There we go. 
All right, for some reason it wasn't updating. I don't know why. Maybe it's still not. Looks like it is. I think we're okay now. Anyway, um, so um, the only this one looks like it's uh, trending down. Then, if that's uh, if this is a current chart, if that's trending down, then that would be the uh, the only uh, pullback uh, of interest that I would be looking at taking an entry into this trade. Are there any questions so far? So far, there's been no questions, which is really amazing to me, but it just tells me that a lot of people are taking notes uh, or paying attention, or they've fallen asleep and their head's uh, got a keyboard imprint on their forehead. But either way, uh, if you do have questions, I'm, I'm open to those uh, as we continue on. Uh, once a trade is entered, then that's where the levels come in. So once you see an, uh, an initial alignment mark, then you put your levels on at that point and you define them based upon the current level. So if you have specific points, then the stop relative to the Hawkeye stop is going to be the risk in your trade. And each profit target then is a, is a measure relative to that stop. So if this is a one stop level, then that same one stop level becomes your first profit target. Second one is your second profit target. So if you're looking specifically at target ranges, then a three to one profit target based upon a risk is the value that you're looking at taking. Does that make sense? Good. Because that's part of the risk management. You always have predefined risk in the trade, and you always know what that's going to be before the trade is taken. Number of contracts that you have in, all that has to be defined before you ever take a trade. Once you have that defined, then that becomes your risk in the trade. And each subsequent level then becomes your reward that you're looking for. Anne asks a good question. Um, she's trading with MT4, but um, um, I'm showing the NinjaTraders platform today, so uh, it is the same application, the same methodology on MT4 as well. Um, MT4 will be next week, so if you come back next uh, week at the same time, we'll be showing only the MT4 platform. But yes, a 5-minute, a 15-minute, 30-minute, they are definitely harmonic because 5 times 3 is 15, 15 times 2 is 30, 5 times 6 is 30, so they are all harmonic and they all agree with each other. So yes, those will be fully harmonic. Regardless of the platform that you trade, harmonic timeframes will definitely benefit you. Whether you trade three minute or five minute or not, then yes, harmonic is the key and that's the one you're looking for. Yeah, um, yeah, Philip, the uh, KISS uh, can, can be different on different platforms based upon the data that you've got driving it. Um, if you look at my data on this KISS here, if you look at the data series, I have it um, set up. Let's see, oh, I'm sorry, this is the data series, sorry. Look at the indicator. I'm, I'm using up volume and down volume. A lot of them will use advancing issues versus declining issues, or if you're using um, the uh, ADV US, which is all the advancing issues on the US market, and, A and DEV, I mean DEC, LUS, declining issues on the whole US market, and those are special symbols as well. They all work. Here on NinjaTrader, you don't have access to the, U the global US, so you do have the UVOL or DVOL, you also have ADV or DECL, and those all work as well. So what you're looking for is a relationship, an inversely proportional relationship of up volume versus down volume or advancing issues versus declining issues. And they will be different based upon the data you're using. Okay, so David, you said you missed uh, how or where we would be entering this long. Okay, the first occurrence, okay, of this is where you have volume, trend, volume, and heat map 
alignment. That's your first step. Second would be second time frame volume and heat map. In this case, we have a dark red, which is good. And that satisfies our second criteria. And then the third time frame agreement is volume. So you have volume agreeing. And this is the very first point where you could have entered this trade. I have a rule that does not allow me to, to enter the trade um, at market open. And I do not enter trades any time within the first 15 minutes. So this would not have been a good entry for me. As you can see, right when the market opened, there was a big corrective move. And that would have been a great place to have entered if you're a risk taker. However, I, I tend to wait. And so right here, you can see that uh, that the second and third time frame are still full agreement. But the first time frame, you now have red volume. Here you have white volume. Here you have white volume. The first time that you get agreement on all three again, the roadkill confirms that with these two little gray dots. The roadkill dot says there's a volume aggressive, which means that the volume of the fast time frame has now cycled back into agreement with the longer time frame volume. And you can see that the second time frame roadkill has cycled back into agreement with the longer term volume. So we can see that reflected here. Now you're starting to see that the second time frame volume is turned red on two bars. You can see that's reflected here, uh, but it has not done so on the third time frame. It's still green, so you can see that's why the, the third time frame volume here is still green. So the entry point was given where there was alignment. And once that triggers the alignment, that becomes your trigger bar and then the following bar then becomes your entry bar. So you either put it at the close of the trigger bar or at the open of the current bar, wherever you take your entry at. Now the, uh, the entry point of the levels will always be at the close of whatever bar that you click on. So if you um, turn this one off and you click on the, the next bar right here, then you can see that it it paints the bars starting at the close of that current bar. If I put it on this bar here, then you can see that it will go on the close of that bar. Okay, so wherever you click, it's going to automatically place itself on that bar. If your entry price is close to that somewhere, then then you can move it around and, and click on a bar, which gives it a close entry, but you're not going to be able to change the value of the placement to be exactly the same as your entry point, unless it's a, a nice coincidence. You just want it close. The important part is that it's just close to your price so that you have a good measure of stop and a good measure of profit target that matches your risk reward profile. And that's the important part. Once that's established, then you just lock it in place and then you allow it to uh, take time to measure. Have your stop set. This is a good placement for the stop because it's below the uh, first pivot here and uh, it's, uh, it's right about halfway between the Hawkeye stop. So you're minimizing the risk that you would have had in the trade, but you also are looking at where the profit can be taking you. This is set up so that each one of these profit targets are two ATRs. If I were to look at the indicator itself, then if you roll, scroll down to that Hawkeye Levels tool, you can see that I have set my ATR profit factor to 2, but I left my ATR stop factor to a 1. So what that tells me is uh, that I'm looking for a uh, 1 level of stop is equal to 2 ATR profit factor. So I want to keep a one-to-one -one risk reward. If I made the stop factor larger, it's just going to multiply this number times this number, and that will be the stop. So if I have anything other than one as my stop factor, I'm going to have, I'm not going to have a one-to-one -one risk reward. I mean, it's real simple, but that's why I like to keep my stop set to one so that I always know that my stop value will always equal a measure of each profit value. So it's clear and easy to see risk reward ratio. 
But in this case, the number two tells me that it's my ATR profit factor. I take two ATRs per profit target. And ATR is the average true range of a price bar. So it's the average height of high to low of 14 price bars coming up into this. So you take that average range, multiply it times two, and that will give you this distance right here. If I did that simply by one, then my stop would also be one ATR. But right now I have it as two, so I have a two ATR stop and a two ATR profit target ratio. We also have rules for exiting trades as it continues on. If you have set level two as your profit target, then when you hit level two, uh, that's when you take profits in the market. The level rules are such that you exit the trade whenever your profit targets are hit. If you have a close above level two, then you automatically would move from stop to break even. So anytime you have at least two levels of profit in a trade, never allow the trade to go against you. Always have a always win kind of game. If you're not taking profit out at this point, you have to make sure that you're at least not going to be risking anything in that trade if you're still waiting for it to develop. Level three could be your first profit target. It could be your second profit target. It might be your third profit target. Taking a one to one, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Taking a two to one, it's better. Taking a three to one, that's the name of the game. Uh, because for every three to one that you take, that's three losses, three stops that you can take to be back to break even. So you're always trying to hit those three to one profit targets and allow the trade and momentum that's in the trade to continue and carry you into that trade. That's the whole idea behind it. All right, so let me go ahead and put this here. That way I can show you how the stop is going to be managed. And then uh, let me pull that down and change that to uh, red. All right, so we've got a nice red stop going on there. We've entered right here, and then we're going to be taking our profits when we first head up. I want to set up, and we're going to be looking at that same thing. So let's, let's take a profit. When we hit level two here, that's four ATRs. We'll sign that as our first profit target. I like to do one tick prior to. All right, so um, tick that when price comes up and it will have to hit that level to fill you on that. So it has to push through it just by one tick. So that way you're hitting the level two and a close above level two moves your stop. But this will be a profit take. And then you can also do the same thing on level three as well as a profit take. So those can be our two profit points just for today's class. And then we'll show you how that trade uh, con continues on or progresses. You can see that we're continuing with extreme strength. It's starting to flatten out just a little bit. The other markets are starting to pull back down again. And you can see that the overall market is showing a bearishness here. So maybe it would be wise of us to go ahead and take a profit when we get them or on the first sign of weakness, whenever you see a red volume bar push up and pull back again, then that might be a good time to go ahead and take a profit and watch for the rest of the market to pull back in. Because right now you can see the, the other markets are continuing weak. The mid cap uh, are extremely weak. The Dow Jones is trending weak. Uh, the S&P is trending weak, but it's gone back to a uh, nice midpoint, fair value. But the, the NASDAQ is, uh, is really strong right now. So let's continue to hold this out and see. Um, you might want to start looking at pulling your stops up at this point. Then you're starting to see some weakness coming in. This doesn't mean the price will close red. It just simply means that right now you've got red volume painting on this but you don't know if that's going to stay or not because it can change. The volume indicator, and I'll go ahead and pull it up here for you, uh, can be uh, identified uh, and calculated whether it's on the bar closer on each tick. Right now I have it set on each tick so that I can see the color change as the trade develops. 
if you put it on bar close, then you're not going to see any indication of volume until the bar actually closes. And once it closes, then it's going to be painted. So you can see that can be very misleading. If it starts to turn red on you during a trade, you start to get worried and go, oh, no, I might start losing profit. And then it turns back green again. Just you, then you think to yourself, see, so you don't it, it can get you into that game if you're looking at tick by tick volume. The actual volume indicator simply paints itself purple during that time frame to try to keep that from occurring. But the volume price bar, the, the volume paint bar, you can have it set to show you the color as it's developing. So that's a kind of a way to cheat, but at the same time, it's, it's a way to get distracted and possibly fall into a, a trick trade. As soon as, as soon as I see a, uh, a weak volume bar paint, then I probably would be looking at uh, taking some exits in this trade, especially since my, uh, my fat boy looks like this and my kiss is looking like that. I would take the profits um, as it presents itself. I would probably at this point go ahead and move my stop to a break even plus one tip to pay for the trade. and then allow that move to put in. See, it's continuing to push up. I'm getting very close to my first profit target. I have a zero risk, risk trade now. I, I have not waited for the volume to close above level two yet. Um, I need to see that really to move this up to stop, but because the fat boy and the kiss are against me, then I can move that up. There's my first profit take. So then at that point, I'm, I have taken profit on level two, and uh, that gives me the ability to move my stop up to break even now. So I, I definitely am in a no risk position. Let me put my ruler in here to show that the entry point to my first profit take right there. So next profit take is at level three. So I'm trying to focus on managing the trade, minimizing my risk. You can see that the Hawkeye stop is automatically trailing the trade to minimize risk at all possible. But you can see that my risk now is, is governed by where I am based upon my profit take. So I have no risk in this trade at this moment. I have taken a level two profit and the remaining, if I have any, are at a no risk position that if, if the trade pulls all the way back against me, then I'll get out of break even, but I'll still be able to, to have this in, in the market. Notice that price went right up to our target. Okay. But that's why I, I almost always will stick my target one tick below my target so that it, it will almost always get filled if it's going to start playing with that level. You do the same thing for any of the levels for that, that point. So um, 50 right there, that's one tick before. And you just continue to hold your trade until volume starts to tell you otherwise, or if you have a reason to get out. The reason to get out being a profit target hit, uh, a reversal trade, uh, six ways the market moves. And so forth so right now six ways is telling us this is a trend run we've got trend run we've got trend run this is a breakout of congestion so that's confirming the direction of the trade so we've got everything is pushing us in that direction you're not worried about the trade or losing anything you're just managing the risk in the trade because what you've done is you've put yourself in front of a high probability breakout a high probability trade that's confirmed by triple time frame volume and momentum. This price closed right at the level two stop. So by the rules, you still would have your stop listed right down here. However, since that was my first profit take, I did move my stop up to break even plus one so that uh, I have a, a no loss setup. And that's the, that's the way I structured my trading plan rules to help me to stay 
in the trade and to take a profit. If if I were waiting for a level three profit target, then I'm I need to see a stop or a close above level two in order to move my stop up. If you're looking at uh, the amount of money, then you don't really worry about that until the trade's over. That's why you don't don't have any dollar signs or anything set up to show you the amount of money in a trade. Always have it set to just show you the the number of ticks that you have in the trade. In this case, 12 and a half ticks is what we took on that. We're getting ready to take another two ATR profit right here. It's just one tick one tick away from that. I'll go ahead and uh, allow that to continue on. The last one, usually we'll have uh, multiples on here where you take two profit takes and then the last part of the trade will be the runner. So in this case, if you had three contracts on, you take one off at two, one off at three, and then let the last one be a runner in the trade. And I will give you the full runner rules as this come, does develop out. But I want you to see that. Uh, this is a $5 per tick contract. So 12.5 12 ticks, okay? Uh, 12 and a half ticks is a, um, um, is that, oh, wait, wait a second. I don't think that's ticks, points. I think that's a Y value. So if we're looking at this entry, 50, that's a 55.62. Yeah, that's 12 and a half points. So that's 12 and a half points. So you, you have about four ticks per point, the way it's listed here. Yeah, so each tick is listed. So it's 12 and a half points in this trade. Each point, um, each tick is $5. So each point is 20. So you take 12 and a half and multiply that by 20 will give you an actual dollar value for the trade. Times the number of contracts, of course. The level rules state that you always keep your stop at least two levels from the current price or at the Hawkeye crash barrier, whichever is closest to price. So right now, since we have closed above level two, but we have not closed above level three, then we need to stay two levels behind where the current price is, which is level two. So one, two would be at break even. So we're at break even plus one tick. That's where we'll stay. If I see a close above level three, then two levels down from level three is a two, one. I would move, I would keep at my, my stop at a level one plus one tick. I don't have to do plus one tick. I just always tend to do that for a, to pay for it. If I'm following it, then I might want to even keep it at it or maybe even one tick behind it because a lot of times it'll come down and just barely hit that. But at any rate, um, one, one, one or two ticks here and there is not going to make a big difference. Okay, it's hitting my, uh, my mark. I need one tick plus in order to push it through, which is going to put it exactly at a 720, 60, 75. So I, I need a 75 hit which will definitely fill my 50 target that it's pounding right now. Fat boy is still showing us that the, uh, the extreme strength of NASDAQ is really good and that the other markets are now starting to, to rally in agreement. The S&P now is starting to rally with strength. You can see that the weakness in the Dow is starting to turn and the mid cap now is starting to roll up and out of weakness. They're still very decorrelated, which means that they, uh, they, there's a high probability that the markets can go sideways or start to chop out. But for now, um, we're in a great trade and we're in a great trend and we just continue to hold with that. Now remember at 1030, which is in about 10 minutes, uh, crude oil news is going to be coming out. So um, 
if you're creating crude oil, then uh, just be le leery and uh, watch for that time frame. Uh, and watch for the news that's coming out on that. There it goes. All right, we just got filled. All right, now you take the second marker. You pull that in from a zero point up to the second point of failure. I feel 50, 72, 60, 80, 950 right there. Boom. Okay. So the second field gives us 19 ticks on the trade. And then we'll take this one and uh, to get rid of it altogether because now we have the last one is the runner in the market the runner in the market will follow the stop we took profit at level three so we're going to take our stop and we will move it up to a level one or the hawkeye stop whichever is closest the hawkeye stop is farther so right now this is going to be our current stop in the market if you see a structure in price like right here this is a pivot low structure low all of the rest of these are just really nice trends. Um, you you uh, might want to put it just below that. In this case, there really isn't one because the tr markets are trending so fast that uh, it pulls it up to those points. So you, you'll want to just stick with your level rules in this case. So you, you're locking in two ATRs of profit on your remaining contract, but you're giving it enough room to allow it to continue to run if it wants to. If it doesn't run, it may go into consolidation. It may go into uh, uh, a lot of other things. Um, if it does go into consolidation and breaks down before it hits your stop, then you exit the trade at that point. That's the six ways a market moves exit. So there are several exits that you would be taking. But in this particular case, you've got a strong trend. You've got the market starting to come into a, a directional alignment, and you're starting to see the KISS finally agree with the direction that you've already been in. Six ways is already telling you that three time frames are all in trend run in your agreement, in your direction. So there's no reason to even consider getting out of a trade. You manage the trade just based upon your rules. As long as this close is greater than this trend dot, and these trend dots are continuing to rise, you have a nice uniform separation. Notice how they've spread out and become uniformly spaced. That's a, it's a great position to be in. It gives you a lot of flexibility and room for price to breathe and to move. And price, when it gets starts to um, get this far away from the trend dot, that's a, a good sign for you to um, come back to. So this becomes like a support level. While it still gives you a good buffer for not only your current stop, but the Hawkeye stop, it's a really great place for price to just come back to, to relax, to get off some pressure, but then to gives it room to continue on. Because the longer time frame, we were in congestion and we've just broken out. So this is a great place of price to break and to continue on. High probability though, that it could come back and retest before it does continue on the longer term. But on the shorter term, We've already been able to capitalize on this and take two and four ATRs of profit from that, only while only risking two ATRs. This is two ATR, this is four ATR, and this is six ATR. So we actually were able to take four and six. So we've taken 10 ATRs of profit off of this so far based upon a two ATR risk. All right, let me see. I, I think I missed a few questions. I'm giving you a play-by-play -play here. Um, let me go back and see this. Uh, okay, Mick, sorry about that guy. Uh, NT8 zones, yeah, I, I, as soon as possible because as you notice, I don't have them on my charts. So I love the zones and I hate trading without them. I do have another computer here where I've got either MetaTrader 4, I've got TradeStation on them, I'm displaying my zones. They still work in NTA, but right now I still don't have a workable copy of the NT8 zones. So we are working on it, and I want them as uh, probably worse than you do. 
but uh, we're uh, we're working on trying to get that and make that happen. David, um, let's know something. Uh, is an alert possible? Uh, not the market analyzers all green when there's a, absolutely. Um, any of the tools have alerts built into them. So um, if you go to like the trend, for example, um, you can turn your alerts on whether you have a trend alert or a stop alert. Uh, your bar seven, uh, your alert sounds, you can customize your sounds. You can give it a specific sound file. So there, are, all the alerts are built into the indicators. Uh, the same thing with your market analyzer tools. Whenever you see the market analyzer start to turn and the volume changes or any of the other values start to change, then you can uh, go in and format those. So you can set the alerts up to be anything and you can define them based upon any or all or how often that they're done based upon uh, what message that you want to give it and so forth. So any of these things can be set up and defined uh, within the conditions um, that you've set up. And the alerts are always going to be dependent on the platform you use. So the alerts for Ninja are going to be different from the alerts on TradeStation and so forth. Um, you can place direct orders on the chart. These, uh, what I'm showing here is just a simple measure tool to show you where the trade measurements are. So, absolutely. Timothy says, way to go. Thank you. Ann, when you say profit take at first target, are you scaling out then moving the stop? Yes, that is correct. I thought I was clear on that, but, but thank you for asking. I'm glad to make sure that we keep it going on that. Uh, David, do you really need six and nine minute charts since the three minute shows everything? No, I mean... The, the reason I have the other charts, you know, like you said earlier, I can just set this up to be a single chart. I don't have to have the other charts there. I, if you want to keep things as simple as possible, then, then yeah, you don't. This shows you your three, six, and uh, twelve-minute time frame setups and alignment. Absolutely. However, I like to follow the six ways the market moves. Me. I'm a creature of habit, but I also want to understand and know where the market is. And being able to look and very quickly glance at this and say, okay, I'm in a trend run, I'm in a trend run, I'm in a congestion breakout phase uh, long, those, that's information that I can use to help me as a trader to apply to the charts and to understand these trades. So based on that, it gives me a much better view of where the market is. So yeah, I could take this chart right here and let me pull that here right here. I could expand that out like this and still have my fat man, my fat I mean, fat boy, my kiss, my market analyzer set up like this. It's a pretty chart. It's it's nice and clean. It's set up. Everything looks good on that. So yeah, it's a trader preference. This looks like the volume bar is starting to show our very first corrective point. Notice how volume is starting to extend high. Notice that price is closing down under that. This is a very good indication that market institutions are trying to push price up and steal your money. Make you start buying into a potential breakout or the high of the day. Don't fall for those traps. Um, price still closed green with green volume. Okay, so, so while this is going to become a pivot high, if price does not close higher than this point, we'll paint a pivot on that to show that this is a pivot and an isolated high, and we're expecting price to close directionally three to five price bars down from that point. 
Shorter time frames are saying that this is a reversal, potential reversal point. It's a false breakout. Uh, but our three minute bar and chart is still, still telling us there's enough volume on the three minutes to say this is still trending up. We can see the six minute volume and the 12 minute are still strong and our 60 is going with ult uh, uh, extremely high volume supporting it. So for now, don't let these things scare you out of the market. Also, don't, don't use them, don't allow them to fake you back into the market if you're not in the market because the market will come right back in line with that and try to try to get you out of that market. So just trade your rules, sit back and just be calm, watch and follow the rules, make the let the market take you out of the trade. Don't get scared out of the market because of any tricks that the uh, institutions are trying to trick to play on you. And as you manage the trade, the money is just secondary. Like I said earlier, you manage the trade, you manage your risk. Your first profit take gave you 12.5 times 20. That's $250 per contract. Just following very simple rules. Second profit take was 19 ticks, 19 points. 19 times 20 is $380. So that's another $380 added to your 250 and you, you've got a stop on your last contract, your runner, which is that one ATR. One ATR looks to be about six and 6.25 or so. So that's give, that's going to give you about uh, 200 uh, or so dollars. 6.25, no, that's uh, 206, it's 12, it's $125 uh, right here per level, basically, is what you're looking at. 120 to 125. So I'll have another 125 bucks locked in already waiting for this price to come back out. Notice that the Hawkeye stop is very quickly approaching your locked in stop. So if that starts approaching and going greater, then we're going to be moving our stop with the Hawkeye stop rather than keeping it here at level one. So David Duggan, uh, your question on alerts is more, can, can you get one alert when there is alignment between price, volume, and trend? Um, no, because they are separate indicators. You can set your alert up on the roadkill. So if you have a roadkill signal, you can alert on that. That signal a lot shows you when the alignment of volume or trend agree with that. But, it, uh, but you'll have to have a separate one for your heat map. The heat map higher time frame is a separate indicator. You're starting to get neutral volume. Um, your price, this was not the low because you had the, the low. This was not higher than this low. So this is not an, an actual isolated low. So we're not going to be painting any pivots on there. Uh, but it is still a phantom high. And so if phantom high can be as effective as a real high, you still would be looking for price to, to retrace back one, two, three price bars in this range. But the trend dots are still rising. Price is still greater than the trend dot. Volume has gone neutral, hasn't gone red yet. If we start to see a congestion entrance, then we can start managing our trade based upon that. We don't have any risk in this trade, so there's no reason to get out. Other than I'm out of time and I need to get out. <laughs> or if you got to go somewhere, close your trade out, take your money and run. Which is what I'm going to do right here. This this could continue on. Um, it, sh it shows all the sign of a nice, uh, strong move. So um, uh, everything else is starting to trend up. And notice the, the S&P, uh, the, the, the Dow. Mid cap isn't, uh, but the others are starting to move in that direction. So at this point, I am going to go ahead and close this particular trade out. So I'll get rid of the stop. Let me pull this uh, measure in to show you the end of the day. So I'll take that initial point here, move it up to the current price, wherever it is right here, minus one tick, boom. And that's the closing price right there. So 
Let me turn my levels off and then uh, show you the outcome of that. So first profit take was a 12 and a half. 12 and a half is 250. Okay, 250. Let me pull this over for you. 12.5 times 20, 250. Okay, we'll add that to our memory. Second profit take, 19. 19 times 20, 380. We'll add that to our profit take. 17.75. 17.75 times 20 equals 355 memory plus. So recall memory, 985. Simple rules, managing the trade, waiting for the time frame to get in, waiting for your entry rules, managing it, not doing anything stupid, not allowing for and greed to get out of your way. Just simply following the rules. That's a that's a nice day. Okay. Even if I were to take this trade and had to loss a stop out, it's still a good day because I followed my rules. The nice thing about this is that I have I can take a stop three, two, three, four times for every one of these I take. Okay. So I've got a level two, that's two stops I could have taken. A level three, that's three stops I've had taken. And the uh, runner is just the runner. So, and that's uh, where I'm at right now. You can see the market's continuing to run. So it never crossed down below those trends. The trend dots are still rising. So stick with the trend because it's going to continue to go with you. The roadkill does have a trend component. It has a volume and trend. The dots right here show the trend for the higher time frame. The bars show you the volume. And the roadkill signals themselves will give you either component. Let me get this out of the way. So if you were to pull that up and look at that, then you can see um, the, you can show the volume, you can show the trend, and the signals associated with it. Okay, so you have a, a trend entry signal, a trend roadkill, a volume roadkill and a volume aggressive. So you have four different signals that the roadkill will show you based upon time frame alignment. So it shows you when the volume are agreed. It'll show you when the trend are agreed and for either time frame. That looks like a false breakout. When you get a big push like that and a pull back, back down like that, it started to show back up here. But see this right here? This is uh, a big indication that uh, the institutions are tricking you into a false breakout and then they pull it back down real quick to hit your stops. I call them price extension on opposing volume. So this paints itself red. Then this is a very good indication that price is going to start reversing right back down again and correcting back down. Good thing I got out when I did. I... <laughs> All right, so 985 is a good day. Uh, you continue to trade. If you look at the, the way the, the, the market moves, then uh, it helps you to stick with the trends, stay with the trends, take profits along the way. Uh, you'll, you'll never be uh, regretting it. I'm going to go ahead and see, notice that it closed back down. Big red volume bar, price extension. These are the points where you look at true reversals coming into this point. So um, that's that's what I always try to look for. I always look for these on reversal reversal points to help me to not only establish long trades but to establish short trades as well. All right, hey guys, this has been really fun. I appreciate the time you spend with me. This has been recorded. Let me go ahead and turn the recording off at this point.